Legends tell of six Toa heroes who fought evil and faded away into history. But legends never die and they shall rise again. Now the Toa have returned to fight evil. United they stand, destined to find the masks of power in order to fulfill their duty to protect the island of Okoto. This is Bionicle Week. Day 5. Liwa, Master of Jungle and the Protector of Jungle. Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome back to Bionicle Week. Today we'll be taking a look at Liwa, Master of Jungle and the Protector of Jungle. And, as you can see, they come in these same boxes that the other Toa and Protectors come in. Liwa is a $15.85 piece Toa, the Protector of Jungle is a $10.64 piece Protector. They both come with blue skull spiders, and they look like they're having fun in the jungle region of Okoto. Let's take a look at Liwa. So here is Liwa, the Master of Jungle. Uh, Toa Liwa was formerly the Toa of Air. Yeah, something's changed in a minor reboot. Um, anyways, so Liwa here is now the Master of Jungle, uh, which makes more sense. All the Toas of Air hung out in jungles anyways. Um, interesting note about his comic, he includes... That's a purple skull spider. Like it was still teasing us. I want red and purple skull spiders in the next wave, just saying. Now, in my opinion, Lee was one of the best Toa sets, as he's not overly bulky. The rest of the Toa have a lot of armor, kind of clogging things up a little bit uh, with articulation. While it still functions perfectly fine, and the uh, you know shoulder pads can be moved out of the way, with Lee Wai, you don't really have that problem. He doesn't really have shoulder pads. He's got spike things. But I love the way the armor is designed, because it doesn't look too thin, nor does it look too bulky. As you can see up top here, uh, Liwa has this great looking mask. It's more based on Liwa Nuva than anything. Um, I don't know, it's got the slits on the sides, remind me a lot of his original mask. Um, but, you know, what can you do? I love the orange. Uh, it's a nice new color. The orange and green look nice together. Um, but anyways, these spikes up here uh, do have the ability to move out of the way or be just completely removed if you don't like them. Um, they can just slide right out. But the thing is, is that they're adjustable, but the only thing they're really restricting is head movement. But the kind of head movement you'd want for a flying Toa is, you know, just kind of up so you can fly. And you can pull that off pretty well. Um, the, the only restrictions up here is really, like, how far up his head will go. Um, and that is a slight restriction. But outside of that, his head does turn left to right. It does have ball joint. It's just a little crowded up by his head. But that's okay, because his shoulders are free to move however they want. Um, they are, they get so much range because there's no shoulder pad blocking them. Uh, same with his elbows, and his wrists, and his hips, and his knees, and his ankles. He's basically got the same articulation as every other toe in this line. Um, and that is okay, because consistency is nice. Um, I also like his printed chest. It is not a sticker. Uh, the only chest that is a sticker is Onua. Um which is unfortunate. Now, something else you might notice is unlike the other toe where all their armor is this direction, he has armor on his arms like that. And that's because he has connection points back here. Um, and we'll get to that. But first of all, I do need to mention his gears. Uh, his gears allow his arms to do this, which means because of the lack of shoulder restriction, you can do a full turn of the gears and his arms will swing. Just pretty neat. And that goes in conjunction with what he has for weapons. That's why I'm turning him backward. So you get these two wings. Uh, these basically clip on here, uh, like, like this, and they allow him to fly. Basically glider wings. You can jump from a higher tree, glide down to a lower one. Which is pretty sweet, and he does get two swords. Uh, these being s these silver versions of the swords that came with Tahu. Um, so. That's pretty neat. Um, plus, his wing things are for Dolly's fins. Um, and he falls over when you don't balance him right. But anyways, this gives him a great little look here. Um, I like the idea of the Toe of Jungle having wings to fly um, in addition to vine swinging. Uh, and the swords are very reminiscent of Liwa Nuva, which, you know, is probably one of the more famous Liwa designs um, since it was used for two years of storyline. Um, but as you can see, he's got two swords, and, of course, the gear gimmick allows him to swing the swords. Um, 
which works really well. Now we want to power him up a little bit. We'll get his golden mask of power here, which looks really nice. Swap it out. Plug it on here. And then we got to remove these pieces here. You want to leave the connector peg in his arm, otherwise his arm looks super thin. Remove the sword. Place the sword at the back. Plug this here. That. And then this, like that. And unpeg and hold. And now he's got a pair of twin axes. And I realize I just said pair of twin axes, and that's a double duplication. I'm, I'm going to stop speaking about twins and du duplicates. Anyways, he's got two axes now. Um, which look really cool. Uh, it works really well um, overall because they are. I like when they have the same weapon twice. It kind of gives them a better look than like Golly's giant axe thing. Um, Liwa does pull this off really well, and you know he had an axe originally in his original Toa Mata body, so it's pretty cool overall. I do like it. Um, I do like how the gold mask does stand out. It makes it look special because um, the green kind of matched the rest of his colors. The gold doesn't match anything else. It kind of stands out as. He's got the superpower now. Um, with the other Toa, the masks just kind of blended into their color scheme. Uh, with the gold armor Toa, and Gali's kind of matched a little bit too. But with Leo, as it kind of stands out, as he's got the special mask on, which is pretty cool. And so is this set. This set is really, really cool. Speaking of things that are really cool, this is Protector of Jungle, who is probably my se second favorite of the protectors. I really like this guy. First of all, his design, with the mask and everything, kind of gives him a look very similar to Gresh from the Gotorian line, who I thought was one of the better designs from that series. Um, you know, it's now in clear green with green paint on top, which looks good. But what you also notice, he's got an asymmetrical design in that he has a shoulder pad over here. He's got one single shoulder pad, and he's got chest armor, but he does not have one over here. It also has these vine things sticking out of his legs, uh, which is pretty cool. Anyways, this guy has pretty good articulation. He's got, you know, the neck, shoulders, he's got elbows that can be turned even for a deeper bend. Uh, he's got wrists, he's got really long arms and long legs, so you got hips, knees, and ankles. So he get, gets a wide range of poses, but what makes him really cool is because he's green, he lives in a jungle, he gets a bow. His Gatling gun is a bow. Now, yes, this is kind of dumb having a Gatling gun in a bow shape, but when you're not firing the bullets, you don't realize it's a Gatling gun. This is a bow and arrow weapon. Um, he's got the cool, I think it's the ice pieces repainted green and blue this time. Um, and it looks really cool. Like, I love the way this looks, especially when he holds it. The reason for the one shoulder pad is just like a lot of archer, uh, armored archers in you know, fiction and life. Uh, they have a single shoulder pad over the arm that isn't firing, isn't holding the bow. Um, helps protect their firing range. Now, what this allows for is his extra long limbs allows him to pull off these great archer poses. And I honestly think this is super cool. I'm totally getting a green arrow vibe off of this guy just because he's green and carrying a bow. And I gotta say, the way that the articulation is set up allows him to have a couple different poses here with the bow. He can kind of have it at rest, he can be pointing it towards the sky, kind of try to shoot skull spiders as they're coming down at him. This guy is really neat. He's a lot more playable than some of the other protectors. And even though he only has the one weapon, his articulation is sufficient enough to have multiple poses. And I really do like him, and I think he's great. Um, but other than that, I don't really have anything else to say about him. Now, as always, we can make a power-up Liwa form after combining Liwa with the Protector of Jungle. So, without further ado... So, here is power-up Liwa. And I must say that, uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, first of all, all you do is just add the little vine things to Liwa's feet and give him the crossbow. There's not much else to it. Um, and it does actually function pretty well. I mean, he can... He more holds it like a crossbow than a, than a bow and arrow kind of look. Uh, Protector of Jungle more holds it like a bow and arrow. Liwa can't pull it off because of his arms uh, and his armor, but he can kind of be this uh, death from the skies kind of guy, flying by, just raining down tiny Lego stud bullets. 
But what's cool is that there's only two pieces left behind, and those are Lewis swords. And if you're thinking what I'm thinking, Mr. Protector of Jungle here has just become destroyer of skull spiders. Yeah, it leaves behind Lewis weapons. Which means Protector of Jungle here can pick them up, and he's not totally defenseless. Making this the second only combination where the Protector is able to protect itself. Um, I like this a lot when they do this, when they leave behind parts or don't take away certain weapons. Uh, Onua, when he combines with Protector of Earth, still leaves Protector of Earth having the Gatling gun and a small knife. This leaves Protector of Jungle with two swords that he may or may not be physically able to wield. Uh, that's up to debate, but it gives the Toa a new weapon that gives him new abilities, and it leaves the Protector with something to do. Um, it's really nice. I like these combinations uh, that do this, and that's currently just been Onua and Liwa, um, which is why I like this combination quite a bit. So, overall, Power Up Liwa is just cool. So we've seen a lot of Skull Spiders so far this week, and there's not much else to say about these, except for they're a little bit special. They're blue. They're the only uh, straight-up blue Skull Spiders. The ones that come with Pohatu are different blue, but I like the blue color. It's a nice dark color. It gives them a more sinister look. They're really neat. I still like the Skull Spiders. There's just not much else to say about them in a review. So in conclusion... Liwa, the Master of Jungle, and the Protector of Jungle are two really solid sets. Liwa invokes his original counterpart. His mask is kind of a blend of his Nuva and Mata versions. His weapons are both the Nuva and Mata weapons. Uh, he is a great upgrade, and he's a great figure. He's unrestricted in the shoulders. The only place he's got restrictive articulation is in his neck, and honestly, it hasn't hurt any poses I've wanted to do yet. The Protector of the Jungle is by far the best of the Protectors. I still like Protector of Earth because of his awesome chest cannon, but I gotta say, Protector of Jungle is the most useful. Uh, he actually can do things, he can pose separately, and when he combines with Liwa, he doesn't lose anything. Um, and Blue Skull, Skull Spiders are cool too. But overall, these this is another pair I must recommend. Uh, out of all the Protectors, Jungle is awesome. Uh, Jungle and Earth are the two so far that I say everyone needs to own. They're great little figures. The rest of them are kind of passable, um, which is kind of unfortunate. But overall, I gotta highly, highly recommend Liwa. And yes, it's Liwa, not Lua or uh, anything like that. It is officially Liwa in the new uh, universe. That's, that's how it is in the video, so I'm gonna go with that for now. Um, but anyways... I gotta say, I am super impressed by these two, and it'll be hard to top them, but can it be topped by the Master of Stone and the Protector of Stone? Just have to stay tuned tomorrow to find out. And only a certain few of you will understand who all of these characters are. And that's just fine with me.